Hello, in this video I will explain how to compute the Jacobian of a robot manipulator by solving a numerical example. The robot to be used is the IRB 140 robot model from ABB. Here I show the dimensions of the robot as well as its joints. The home configuration is the one shown with all joint values equal to zero, as you can see here. The Denavid Hara method is used to set the position and orientation of reference frames for each link. In the table, I show the corresponding Denavid Hara parameters associated with the position and orientation of the frames shown in the figure on the left. So, for instance, let's assume that we want to compute the Jacobian of the end effector at a given configuration. In the following example, we will assume that the first joint is positioned at 90 degrees, while the third joint is positioned at minus 90 degrees. The robot for this configuration is as shown on the left. These values, uh, for, or from these values, we can compute the relative transformation matrices for its reference frame based on the navid hartmann transformation matrices and obviously considering the current joint values. So, for instance, we can compute matrices A01, A12 and the, the other ones shown here. You can easily verify that the third column of these matrices point towards the z-axis of the current link with respect to the reference frame of the previous link. Also, the fourth column contains the relative position between the reference frames. These are some tricks and, uh, that can help you to validate the numerical results you are obtaining in these matrices. I think it is a good idea to check actually and validate all these calculations to be correct before we move forward, because otherwise any mistake with that we, we get here, we produce here, will produce actually additional mistakes for a reminder of calculations. So, for instance, the offset of the second coordinate system with respect to the first system implies a negative value of minus 360 millimeters in the direction of the y minus 1 axis, which is correct if you, can, if you, if you take a look. If by some mistake we had obtained, let's say, a positive value, it would imply, or we, we could easily realize that value is not correct because that would imply that the position of the second reference frame would be actually be below the ground. Once we have computed and validated all relative frames, we can also compute absolute reference frames, that is, with respect to the robot base. Again, we can check if the results are correct, particularly by observing the third column which corresponds to the directions of the z-axis. Please remember that in order to obtain mat the matrix, for instance, A02, we have multiplied matrices A01 and I I12 shown before. Matrix A03 is the obtained by multiplying the resulting matrix A02 with the matrix A23, and so on. After we have completed all computations, we can extract vector z from each transformation matrix as highlighted, being the vector z0, 0, 0, 0, 1 by definition. In addition to this, we also extract the position of each of the reference frame as indicated, being the position t0, a vector with zeros, again by definition. Once all these vectors are known, then we can proceed to compute the Jacobian of the robot using the expressions shown. In this case, because all joints are revolute joints. Remember that if we would have a prismatic joint, the corresponding column would just include the set vector for the linear component and a vector with zeros for the angular velocity component. For this particular configuration, and robot, the resulting Jacobian is the one shown here, with the numerical values that I'm showing. Now, we are going to analyze this actual result. So, for instance, if we observe the first row, 
that corresponds to the linear velocity in, uh, in, the, in the x direction, this uh, uh, velocity depends on the speed of the first joint, while the, ang uh, the angular velocity in z depends on the velocities of joints 1, 4 and 6. This analysis is important, for example, in kinematic control, because if we want to move the robot in a specific direction, the Jacobian will tell us which joints can be used. Similarly, we observe that joints 2, 3 and 5 contribute to the linear velocity in the y-coordinate and the angular velocity in the x-coordinate. It is also uh, easy to see that the linear velocity component is more sensitive to variations of joint 2 compared to the variations of joint 3. This is quite obvious, but a rotation in Q2 will imply a higher linear displacement of the end effector compared to the same rotation in Q3. And more importantly, analyzing the Jacobian, we realize that there are two rows with zeros, which means that no matter what values we provide to the joint velocities, the linear velocities in the set direction as well as the angular velocity in the y coordinate cannot be instantly modified, at least in this configuration. If we compute the rank of the Jacobi matrix, we get that the rank or for this numerical uh, Jacobi matrix is 4 and therefore is rank deficient because the maximum rank it is obviously 6. This provides a hint that there are two directions that are not allowed. In many cases, the directions that are not obvious as the one shown here, but it is clear that analyzing the rank of the Jacobi matrix, it is, important, it is an important aspect to consider. So for this reason, in order to compute the rank of the Jacobi matrix, we need to find the number of linear independent rows. That can be done by first removing the amount of rows with zeros, or just simply the repeated rows or rows that are a linear combination of other rows. Then, once we have removed those rows, then we need to find which is the largest submatrix with non-zero determinant. We start by finding if there's at least one element which is different from zero. Then we said that the rank will be at least one. Later, we will analyze if there's a 2x2 two two submatrix with a non-zero determinant. If we can find at least one submatrix with the 2x2 two two dimension, that means that the rank is at least 2, and so on. For example, the following, or following with the previous example, we already know that the Jacobian matrix has two rows with zeros, and therefore we remove those rows from the original matrix. We also uh, realize that there's at least one element which is different from zero and therefore the rank we can assure that is at least one. We could also uh, easily find submatrices of size 2 times 2, 3 times 3 and 4 times 4 with known zero determinants which implies that the actual rank of the Jacobian matrix is 4. Bear in mind that there will be many submatrices for a given size, but we just simply need to find one with a non-zero determinant before we try a larger submatrix. Well, in this video I have explained how to compute the Jacobian of a robot manipulator using a numerical example. Thank you very much.